Hey guys, it's Gonzo. Oh, here's some geese. I'm gonna give you guys a tutorial today, a coyote video on a step over set that I just started using last year. I've always used it for uh, bobcats in the winter time. That last fall I tried it, uh, I picked up nine coyotes, uh, five of them were in my step down set. Three were in the step over set, and uh, one was just in regular um, dirt hole. And then I picked up three wolves that were released, and they were all in the step down set. And then I caught two bobcats that I released, and one was in a step down, one was in a dirt hole step over set. But anyways, I'm going to show you my location. Locations are huge for coyotes. Here's a road right here. Comes down. I'm at a Y. It goes that way, there's a pond back there, and then we go this way. But if you go back that way, there's a big gravel pit and a pond and stuff back that way too. And this goes around the corner here, and uh, there's a little gravel pit over this way. Anyways, these coyotes are going to be traveling this road. I'm going to make a set, I'm going to show you what the bank looks like. There's a bank right here. I don't want the animals getting behind my trap so they can look over down the hole to see anything so um, I'm a scent freak big time I believe in keeping as little scent at your place as you can that isn't normally what you're gonna see I'm gonna have a bucket of dry dirt I'm gonna have a bucket with a trap in the dry dirt and then I'm gonna have a bucket with my bait and scent it's a little scent carrier bucket thing that I got two buckets with me and uh, I'll explain what tools I got Normally I can, I'm in and out of here in about five to seven minutes. I mean, that's a quick set for me for coyote. Anyways, let's get on with the step over set. Okay, that looks good. You're going to see a lot of my hands. Anyways, uh, let me stand up one more time. There's my backing right there. And this is just all natural stuff, sticks and stuff. I don't want to mess it around, mess anything up. I cleared a spot out where I'm going to set the trap and then I'll throw a few more leaves over. But right back there at the bottom of that clump under that grass, I'm going to put a hole. I'm going to make this is going to be a dirt hole set with my step over stick. This is exactly what I'm going to show you. It's like a dirt hole, but a little bit different. You're going to use a couple guide sticks because I'm sure we've all had them. I've had coyotes, plenty of them, step right on the front of my trap. They've stepped on it, on the side of it. This way with the, uh, the stick, the step over the guide stick, the only place they can step on is over the stick and they're gonna hit your pan every time. And then I'm gonna show you uh, a new lure that I use and one of my baits, well, one of the baits that I use. A new lure, I'll show you that right away. This Fox Hollow GH2. Uh, that was, I was told that two years ago by a guy. And uh, I've tried many, many different kind of lures and stuff. And this is by far the best. I would highly recommend it. I get all my stuff from F&T or Mr. Duke from Duke Traps. Uh, Cavens. I love this Minnesota brand Predator bait. You know, I, I use a lot of different baits, but Cavens has uh, got to be by far the best for me. At least numbers, number wise. I mean, I've catch coyotes, bobcats with all kinds of different baits, but uh, that one's by far the best. And there's a lot of traffic out this way, bird hunting. So people are going to be traveling. So instead of using a, a Berkshire disposable, I use a drag here. Coyote gets caught. It goes this way into the woods, that way into the woods. Uh, I never have them walk, run down the roads or whatever, so I've been lucky that way. They don't make it in the woods normally five feet and they're all tangled up and stuff. So anyways, what we're gonna do is right here, I'm gonna put make a dirt hole first, right back here, for my bait to go in. I know some people say, you know, dig it down to China. I don't do that. I dig about a six inch hole deep. The straighter down you go the better. And that's it. That's quick. Because when I throw my bait and scent in there, 
I'm going to throw a couple leaves in there on top of it. Not a lot. I just don't want the birds, squirrels or anything finding it. Smooth that out. Now, I'm not another one that's going to go back nine inches and over to the right, you know, and I'm not going to measure. I'm going to come right in front of here because I'm going to have a guide stick anyways. I got stick right there. I'm going to make my hole now. And actually, I'll be, I'll be putting a trap here. Uh, today's October 2nd, so in 13 more days, I'll be back here and I'll use the same exact spot again. And my hole will be dug. Some rocks down in there and stuff. I got two totes at home full of dry dirt. I gotta make this big enough to get my drag down there. I'll keep some of the dirt right here so I can bury that. And people stress bedding. That's one of the biggest things. I don't use pan covers like mesh ones. I use uh, wax paper. You can buy by the roll, cut them out. Nine inch pieces, then I cut a little, little off and for the tongue and dog, I just rip it a little bit. I'll show you. Okay, this hole now is probably, I don't know, four inches deep. Five inches, maybe I should go a little bit more because my drag's going to be in there. If you're using Berkshire's Wolfang or something, you don't have to go as deep. Yeah, that's good. All my traps, Duke number four, four coil, uh, they're all night latched. I have good luck with Dukes. Push all that excess dirt that I had back in there. Okay. Clean it out a little bit, get the leaves out. Put my trap in there. I'm gonna bed it, pack it down really, really well. And underneath my front jaw, I always grab a stick so that trap will not rock. Put some dirt, raise it up. Put that stick in there. Nice and tight. Now I got my dry dirt, I'm going to start packing it in around the sides. Oh, we got a rut. Make sure you don't have anything that's going to keep those jaws from closing all the way. Take my wax paper, I roll it up. I said, I learned this from watching YouTube videos too. Cut it. Make a slit here for the pan and the dog. Oh, I'm going to have to pack that now. Put that in there. You don't want to get dirt underneath your, uh, your tongue to keep your trap from unsetting. Doesn't take much. I 
I got a little whisk broom. I'm going to show you at then what I'm going to do with that. I'll be right back. I got to get a little bit more dry dirt. There's a whole side of a hill full of dry dirt over there. Take my whisk broom, level this bad boy right off. Pans right, they're not the pan, the jaw's right there. Ooh, get a little rock in there. Make it as smooth as you can. You want to level it off with the ground. Couple little rocks, get out of there. Now when these animals follow this road, they're gonna, either way, depending on which way the wind's blowing or not, they're gonna smell this, they're gonna come over. I got a guide stick this way just looks natural. They're not going to come here that way and peek over. They can't get behind it because of the roots and the hill and everything. This way, I'm going to put a rock there so he can't look over that way. And if he's going to want to look straight down that hole, like I got the hole dug straight down, it's kind of on an angle, but it's not. You don't need a big stick for this. This is all I'm going to do. A little stick like that. Bigger than a toothpick. Right here's where my jaws. I'm gonna put that stick right in front of it. Coyotes don't like to step on anything. They come over here and they're gonna, there's gonna be a couple leaves on here, I'll show you. Try and make it as natural as you can. I'm gonna leave that spot open right there for that animal to step. He's gonna come up. Last year is the first year I started doing this. Like I said, I've did it for bobcats, never coyotes now. That animal is going to come up. I'm going to put a couple more rocks here. It's just going to be natural. These rocks, I'm going to leave these right here. They'll dry off. Like I said, come right here. And that's it. At the top of my, hole, my trap, though, I'm going to put some antifreeze in there because it gets real cold here. It's dry dirt, but if it rains, then it's going to freeze. That if this stuff's already on there, we're good to go. I'm going to take a bunch of this on a stick, a big gob of it, down my hole. I'm going to take a stick, not a very big one. Four inches long, maybe. I'm gonna just going to stir around this scent, and I'm going to throw it down backwards, down the hole. I've got bait in there, I've got uh, lure in there, I'm going to take a couple more leaves, I'm going to put them just over the top of the hole, and then when he comes by, he's going to see that there's a hole there, and we'll take a little more dirt, some fresh dirt, and put it right there, just to make it look like something was digging in there. And he's going to think there could be a fox or a coyote come by, buried a dead mouse, something in there. He sees the fresh dirt, and he's going to walk around. It might take him two days, but finally he's going to come back, and he's going to want to know what's in that hole straight down. He ain't going to come back this way. He's going to come straight on. I'll give you guys a shot of this. He's going to come straight on right here. And he's going to see rocks right there, that, finally when it comes on, right that open spot, right there, that's where your trap pan is, he's going to step just over the stick, actually the pan's right there, so, he steps there, he's going to have a surprise waiting for him. Like I said, location's a big one, you got a good road that comes, leads this way, 
and out, or it could lead in, and that way. These coyotes, they travel these roads at night. Uh, fur prices aren't paying a whole lot this year. I'm not going to be doing a lot of trapping, coyote trapping. Uh, set a few cat traps in the winter time, and uh, we got a short uh, pine martin and fisher season. Maybe if I'm lucky enough, I'll get one of them, and maybe a couple mink traps just to mess around. I'm going to trap one or two beavers to eat. I've never tried that before. If you want, I can try making a video on cooking a beaver up. And uh, that's it. It's as easy as that, guys. Like I said, Fox Hollow GH2. That's uh, the best scent I've ever found. And I'll normally set three traps in a row. This is going to be one of them this year. I'm going to use my step-down set. My step-down set, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. That's by far the most productive set that I've ever made and then I'm just going to use the basic uh, basic dirt hole set which is kind of like this but you got a stepping stick and putting a stepping stick there is real easy and don't put a great big stick there like this just something nice and small the coyote see it they don't want to step on it and again leave an opening where you want that coyote to step he steps there there's a surprise waiting for him I mean, you can't tell there's anything there. Just mix in a couple other leaves. And being fall time, you're going to have leaves fall on there and dirt. Uh, and if nothing, just give it time. The first uh, seven days of season last year, I had a couple coyotes playing games with me, and I think I caught a wolf and a bobcat, two bobcats that I released. And then uh, after that, I caught nine coyotes in nine days. Then I pulled all my traps and two or three days in water season I pulled a hamstring and season was over for me. So the next 10 days I got to sit on my couch and do absolutely nothing during my vacation. But anyways, if you guys got any questions or anything. Um, oh, one other thing. Uh, this set I might spray uh, coyote urine and I'd spray it all over back here. Um, I, let my step down set I might not have coyote urine at. You know, I mix them up. You know, some I got coyote urine at, some I don't. This I got Hiawatha Valley. Um, I've been lucky enough, a few guys have sent me some homemade lures and homemade baits and stuff. I use that stuff. I've caught animals with that too. But I'd highly recommend the Fox Hollow GH2 and uh, Minnesota brand predator bait or cave and yeah, Minnesota brand predator bait. You can get this stuff, the GH2 at any uh, place. I always get my stuff from from uh, f and Lower Michigan. And like I said, I'm a scent control freak, so you won't see all this stuff around here normally. It's, everything's behind me. You don't need a nail pad if you got a piece of carpet, if you got a piece of cardboard or whatever, but if you got any questions, uh, get back to me. Uh, good luck this trapping season and stay safe. Peace.